Well, three weeks left to go in the election campaign, and today Labor held its launch in WA, the first time Anthony Albanese had been in the state this campaign. And Labor rolled out Kevin Rudd, Mark McGowan, Paul Keating, with Albanese giving Rudd an awkward hug as he walked into the room. Albanese's speech focused on Morrison's so-called failures on the bushfires, the floods and the vaccines. Policy announcements were few and far between. Albanese did announce one move, that Labor would fund more electric car charging stations. He said, imagine a future where you don't have to pay for petrol bills, without mentioning that the cost of an electric car is actually beyond the budget of the majority, not just the majority, the vast majority of voters. Albanese promised he'd lower the cost of everything from power prices to medicines, even mortgages. Labor has real lasting plans for cheaper electricity, cheaper childcare, cheaper mortgages, cheaper medicines and Medicare, and for better pay. We can do better than three more years of the government that's brought a skyrocketing cost of living and falling real wages. We have the worst inflation rate in two decades. Families are struggling, worried about the future, Yet Scott Morrison just keeps on scrambling from one photo op to another, boasting that the Australian people know who he is. Well, he's got that right. They don't think, they know. They know. That final line, of course, a reference to what Emmanuel Macron said when asked if Scott Morrison was a liar. But on Albanese's point that you just heard there, that there'll be cheaper electricity, cheaper mortgages... Well, he couldn't give any detail about how power prices and mortgages would actually be cheaper, how medicines would be cheaper. And the fact is, we are now looking at higher power bills and with interest rates inevitably rising probably this week, higher mortgage repayments. Albanese also points to Labor being the party of big reform. He says this in every speech he gives, every debate he gives, and he made that point today, but not once did he outline any big reform. In fact, he's doing the opposite. He's saying that there's virtually going to be no change in policy. It's a small target strategy. Now, the launch today kicked off with Penny Wong and Jason Clare. Clare is the relatively junior minister, shadow minister, who outshone Albanese this week when Albanese was in COVID isolation. But at the launch today... Claire was by far the strongest orator. He gave a rousing speech. Friends, Scott Morrison says this election isn't about him. <laughs> that it's about you. And he's right. It is about you and how he's failed you. He was clearly the strongest speaker on the day and much stronger than Albanese. It was unusual that Jason Clare had such a starring role instead of other more senior figures like shadow treasurer Jim Chalmers. Mike McGowan also spoke the WA Premier, but he focused mostly on his own success during the pandemic. He did praise Albanese and said that as a leader, he was driven by empathy, civic responsibility and that he'd make a fine Prime Minister. I've known Anthony for a long time. He's one of the most senior and experienced figures in the nation. He is resilient. He is authentic. He is the real deal. But his endorsement of Albanese was fairly brief, and it was telling that, that McGowan didn't mention Scott Morrison once in his speech. He didn't criticise him at all, and that's because he does get on well with the Prime Minister, and he doesn't have a particularly close relationship with Albanese. Albanese's en entrance was slightly awkward, but this was nothing like the rock star entry that you saw from Kevin Rudd in 2007 at the Labor launch in that campaign. Albanese didn't work the room particularly well, and you just saw before, we'll play it again in a moment, that awkward, reluctant hug from Kevin Rudd when Kevin Rudd went in for the hug, and the awkwardness continued when he kind of waved at a baby. 
The so-called mean girls, who of course deny that they're mean girls, Penny Wong and Christina Keneally were there, but Tanya Plibersek, not a mean girl, she was absent. She's Albanese's main leadership rival and the most popular on the front bench with the public. But she's been snubbed during this campaign, even when Albanese was out for a week with COVID. Daniel Andrews and Anastasia Palaszczuk were also both missing, but the new South Australian Premier, Malinowskis, did have a prominent position and got mentioned in a couple of the speeches. Overall, though, the Labor campaign launch today was quite underwhelming. This was Albanese's first big event after he's been out of action for a week. And you'd have to say, looking back at the past week and a half, that getting COVID was the best thing that could have happened to Labor this election campaign. Remember, Albanese was doing very well, riding high in the polls, until the scrutiny of the first week of the campaign that exposed his lack of policy knowledge. No one could hide it. Taking him out of the daily media cycle meant that there were no more opportunities for him to stumble. The coalition is calling it the Biden basement strategy. And apart from Ray Hadley, Albanese is mostly only doing soft media interviews. He's avoiding any real interrogation. Now, another theme in the campaign today was Labor is trying to make this election about the economy, highlighting rising inflation and cost of living pressures. This is quite a bizarre tactic. Now, Jim Chalmers today said the economy would be stronger under Anthony Albanese. Anthony will be speaking today about the choice, a stronger economy and a better future under Anthony and Labor, or another three years of the same drift and dysfunction which has seen ordinary working families falling further and further behind. This is a high-risk strategy for Labor to choose to campaign on when clearly the economy is an area of policy strength for the government. Unemployment, as Josh Frydenberg keeps telling us, is at its lowest in nearly half a century and the government has managed the Australian economy well through the lockdowns and the pandemic. This is ground where the Coalition wants to fight this campaign and the same when it comes to national security, even the risk of China on our doorstep with the Solomon Islands. But yet we're seeing Labor moving the campaign back onto those areas, those policy areas. Now, what's interesting is that some senior members in the Liberal Party at this point in the campaign, halfway through, three weeks to go, they're less worried about Labor than they are about the independents. And one of them, very clearly, is the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, who launched his own campaign today in his seat of Kuyong. Frydenberg says... He's in the fight of his life. He... Well, it will be a close contest. Every vote will count. Uh, but I've never taken my electorate uh, for granted. I... There are several other Liberal MPs who are also under threat from these so-called independents. Dave Sharma in Wentworth, Trent Zimmerman in North Sydney, Tim Wilson in Goldstein. But it has to be said that very senior Liberals think unquestionably... Frydenberg is overreacting, that he's panicking and he doesn't have a reason to. There's no other senior Liberal figure except for Frydenberg who thinks he will actually lose his seat. It's also important to remember that while it seems like there is a huge momentum behind the independents and any seat that you go to where they're active, they are very visible and their campaigns and the volunteers are very visible, but their, support, their supporters include Green and Labor voters. Labor is virtually running dead in the seats where independents are campaigning. Now, there's every chance that Scott Morrison is running a very successful campaign in the suburban seats and that this will work. It's likely the government will pick up seats from Labor in suburban Victoria and also in New South Wales, as well as some of the regional areas. The question is, and this is what the election will come down to, is if he loses seats to the independents, how many and whether his wins in the suburban areas will make up for the losses to the independents. In my view, it's been a, mis a, a huge mistake for politicians like Frydenberg to be elevating their opponents, in his case, 
the independent, so-called independent, former Labor member Monique Ryan by debating her. This gives her more credibility. He's the treasurer. She's not his equal. She's no one. She doesn't have a public profile. He should follow the golden rule of never mentioning your political opponent's name. And the reality is most voters wouldn't know who these independents are without both the Liberal Party and the media pumping up their tyres. Not everyone follows politics anywhere near as closely as you all do, all of Sky's viewers. And the reality is that most people don't even know who Anthony Albanese is. And this is something that Today Show discovered just this week. That's the um, Labor leader. OK. Name? Blank. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Albo. I remember the face, but I don't know who he is. No kind of inkling of who he might be? No, no idea. Uh, is it Mark McGowan? No. No, it's not. He, they're all white old men. <laughs> uh, Bill Shorten. That was Albo. Oh, right. Bit yeah. close. <laughs> Steve, do you know who this man is? Not a clue. <laughs>